Does anyone remember The X-Files? Is anyone old enough to have watched that? Anyway, in this video I'm going to show you how I built a mechanical digital camera The ukulele forms a face-shaped skin tone object with which I can calibrate the camera. Opening the back of the camera, I can place in a screen a piece of clear acrylic with white backing on which is projected the image of the ukulele. This is roughly in focus, so I know that the lens is set up correctly. The camera is based around an Arduino, which is linked to my computer over USB. This camera has a fairly low range of contrast, so I need to sit very close with a bright light straight at my face. The emergency stop is the start. Before it takes an image, the camera needs to see an even skin tone surface, a piece of wood. This processing sketch interprets the information arriving at the computer over USB and translates it into a pattern of light and dark. A thermal printer on the base of the camera also outputs a kind of receipt of the photo. I used a cheap Fresnel magnifying lens from eBay that cost me about £3. This is a flat lens uh, and because it's made out of plastic it was warped when it arrived so I had to sandwich it between two sheets of acrylic, uh, one of which was about 5mm thick, uh, which I bolted together, um, and that meant it could project an image well. I looked at using uh, some other sorts of magnifying lenses, including this rather strange one, um, but these lenses weren't powerful enough to focus close enough to the image sensor. The image sensor is composed of 96 LDRs or light dependent resistors which are the exact same component that you find in these automatic night lights. It's of course easier to buy 96 on eBay than smash 96 night lights. These light dependent resistors are multiplexed onto an Arduino. Here's an Arduino if you didn't know what one looked like. Um, most Arduinos have only 8 analog channels. Uh, that is analog inputs, so that's why I needed to multiplex the sensors onto there. Uh, multiplexing essentially means only reading groups of eight sensors at once, um, and I needed to use a decade counter to periodically turn on each group of eight sensors without wasting any more digital output pins. In order to keep each pixel evenly spaced and in a neat line, I created these sort of strange circuit board style things on my laser cutter to hold the LDRs neatly. I also had to solder together this huge 48 input plug uh, to plug each of these groups of LDRs into. So this plug board merged 48 inputs into 8 outputs which were plugged into the Arduino analog inputs. This is when I tested the multiplexing for the first time on my computer. I plugged a couple of uh, groups of LDRs into the Arduino. You can see the decade counter pulsing each group of LDRs uh, because I have L LEDs also uh, in the decade counter pins. Um, and there's columns and numbers on my computer screen. What's happening is that these are being read in the opposite direction to the overall... Um, it's like the machine in the hospital. Making yeah. The heartbeat. <laughs> <laughs> so to build up the image, this row of pixels will be read many times over. Um, in the final image, it's about 80 vertical rows of pixels. 
Um, so this entire horizontal row of sensors needs to be moved vertically down the image plane. Uh, the whole process took about 10 seconds as you saw at the start of this video. That movement is accomplished with a stepper motor. Um, essentially what I've done is I've built a scanner uh, but in the hardest and probably worst manner that one could have done. Um, but what interests me about this is that it's a scanner built uh, on a scale on which you can see all the individual parts, the individual pixels, and it's very easy to understand how this each light dependent resistor is building up the image. I decided to add a thermal printer of the sort you would find on Adafruit or basically eBay um, to print out a final image. Um, I'm planning on using this to take people's portraits at uh, various events that I do. Um, as you can see, the process of adding this thermal printer um, was slightly error prone, but I got there eventually. Um, essentially, it's a one bit, I hope I got that right, one bit image quality. Um, so pixels on the pin printer can either be on or off, there's no shading. So all this shading I had to accomplish by hard coding different pixel densities into the Arduino which was a fairly thankless task. That was a fairly quick summary of uh, my mechanical digital camera. I'm sure I could have gone into a lot more depth on a lot of different things about this project, but to be quite honest I'm sick of it and I'm sure many of you watching this are not that interested in seeing every single uh, horrible hurdle that I had to overcome to, to achieve this. I may produce a circuit diagram of the whole thing um, because of course the circuit needed things like limit switches for the stepper motors etc, a shutter switch, um, various other things to make it a functional camera. Um, I may produce that circuit diagram at some point. If you are interested leave a comment below because that's always encouraging um, because otherwise I start to wonder why I, I, you know, there's no real reason for me to do it otherwise. I know how to build this myself and I probably wouldn't ever want to try again. But if anyone might find that useful, um, I'll certainly consider it. I'll post a link here. Before I built this final mechanical digital camera, I went through a few prototypes, um, some of which were quite odd. First of all, I tried to make this trigonometry based Cartesian system with two stepper motors and only a single LDR which was supposed to scan across the scene um, and the view of the scene that the LDR got was restricted by this long pipe so my hope was that a pattern of light and dark would start to build up in the same way that a pinhole camera can build up a pattern of light and dark essentially this was supposed to be like a kind of scanning pinhole camera It never quite worked, but I think that's just because the LDR wasn't quite sensitive enough to the sort of values of light and dark that it would get at the end of that tube. While I was messing around with these light dependent resistors, I also started playing around with making an incident light colour sensor, um, which again, I didn't quite get working, but I think that that's because I needed to calibrate the response of the LDRs to certain wavelengths um, to kind of reference. I just placed coloured plastic filters over three LDRs and combined the values together um, for RGB in a processing sketch. The other disadvantage with this sort of sensor is that if a uh, shadow falls on one LDR and not another then it would be read as a change in colour. But anyway that's just a little interesting aside. Anyway I hope you found that video interesting. I'm not sure I'll say I hope you found it useful because I, I doubt that many people are going to want to copy what I've done. But I, I think particularly uh, this trick of multiplexing sensors on an Arduino using a decade counter could be very useful to somebody. Uh, you can get 96 sensor inputs uh, on your analog inputs almost as quickly as you could get 
eight readings done. Um, so I think that's the most important thing to take out of this. I, I think the Arduino, we've clearly shown that it's a complicated and not particularly good camera. Um, but I found it very satisfying to, to find out how far I could push it. Um, I'm just giving a, a little kind of sneak preview of what I've been up to for for the past three or four months really. I've, I've got fascinated with building clocks and various things uh, since I posted my last video to YouTube but in general uh, on my channel you can expect electronics, mechanics, um, any sort of kind of lo-fi DIY sort of stuff. Um, I built a CNC machine, uh, a CNC router um, using my laser cutter. Um, I have a laser cutter that's a, a kind of basic K40 Chinese laser cutter which I modified to run on G-code um, which is it, it's something else people seem to come to my channel for so so I do check back. I mean the things I put up next will be completely different to this but if, if you like seeing interesting mechanisms then do like, subscribe um, and hopefully see you again. Goodbye.